Right, hello everyone, and uh, welcome to episode one of our Silver String educational video series. My name is Dave White, I'm an engineer here at Silver String, and uh, to take you through the uh, first section, I'd, I'd like to introduce my colleague. His name's Steve Miller. <laughs> Hi Dave. So this evening, or today, we're going to be talking about Spectrum Attacks 8.1 with vSphere Attacks. Uh, this is a pretty exciting release or modification to Spectrum Protect over the last couple of weeks. Um, Spectrum Protect for VMware introduced VM tagging support in the last version, version 7.1.6, but um, as is the case with very many first versions, there wasn't an awful lot of support in there. There were a couple of tags that you could use and it wasn't particularly flexible. With version 8.1, there's a lot more that you can do with uh, using tags to back up um, VMs using Spectrum Protect and they've added more features so it says there for instance inheritance scheduling and application protection in our view this makes tagging an awful lot more flexible an awful lot more usable than it was before this chart shows you the tags that were there before so the two that are purple backup management excluded and management class name they were the only two tags that you could use previously in 7.1.6, which meant you didn't have an awful lot of discretion over what you were doing with VM backups. Now you've got an awful lot more tags, so you've got included. You can uh, specify a particular data mover name, so you can point the uh, VMs to a particular data mover. You can exclude disks or include disks rather than just being, you know, being able to exclude a VM, which means you can exclude disks that are using raw device mapping. You've got application protection for SQL and Exchange, and you can also specify a Spectrum Protect schedule that you want to uh, back up the VM under. In our view, this is um, pretty useful, um, but you know, I'll let Dave explain why we think that's pretty useful. Oh right, well, <laughs> anyone who's ever tried to back up a, a sizable vSphere setup uh, and schedule backups of VMs therein, well, no, it can be a rather complicated business. You can potentially end, end up managing huge lists of VMs You've, in your uh, domain.vm full statements, for example. You could do big, long includes to assign different uh, management classes to it and so on. Um, getting, getting them to go off at different times of the night, you have to add them to a particular data mover schedule. And you can even end up deploying ex lots of extra data movers just to achieve you know some flexibility in your in your uh, in your scenario there. Um, so we think by a, this by the sort of direction of travel with the development of this uh, of Spectrum Protect for VMware is basically to put a lot more control into the hands of the vSphere administrator, and uh, that's what this is. This I think this is that's going to do this, and it's also just it's another string to your bow for scheduling, and uh, I think I can see how it can potentially be quite useful. It's going to need some planning, but it, it's quite a powerful new tool. Um, so let's have a look at our demo okay. environment. So this is our demo environment, Dave. Um, if I quickly look at inventory, so you can see we've only got one ESX host with a data center underneath it and quite a lot of VMs. So these are all sort of development VMs that we're using for purposes of simulating backup workloads. And this is our folder view. So again, like I say, it's pretty standard. We've got a uh, a virtual center VM here, which is actually the one we logged on to. We've got a V proxy here or a V storage backup server, as I believe it's more popularly known. And we've got a TSM server. So because it's only small workloads that we're simulating, we've got quite a high powered TSM virtual machine sitting there. We've also got three VMs here that are simulating standard servers. So that's an AD server and that's a Windows 2016 server. And that's a Windows 10 server. Um, so what are we going to do with these VMs, Dave? Do you want to do anything with those? Or? Well, also what we should say is, uh, importantly, we have deployed the uh, extent the Spectrum Protect for VMware extension for the uh, vSphere web client, and uh, this is what basically brings those tags that we were talking about into the grasp of the uh, of the vSphere administrator. See, so, yeah, as you can see, it's there, it's there in the web client, and uh, Steve's going to demonstrate how you uh, deploy those tags in a short while. Uh, so let's get into that, I think. Do we, do, we, do we look at the proxy server? Oh yeah, let's have a quick look at our uh, Spectrum Protect setup as well as our uh, vSphere setup. So uh, we have got well, a few nodes set up. Here you go. So SSDev up there, that's your data center node. Uh, that'll be familiar to most of you uh, who know about this product. Uh, 
Next, below that, we've got SSDevDM. That is our data mover with the tagging support. Below that, we've got another data mover node, and that's SM, SSDev DM Def. Now, that is the one which we've assigned as the default data mover. Now, uh, once you enable tagging support, you basically have to have a default data mover, which is there to pick up any VMs that haven't had any tags assigned. And uh, we'll go into a little demo of this in just a moment. Uh, but so uh, the two windows you can see up above there, the green one, that is a uh, CLI for the SSDev DM data mover, which is the one with the tagging support. That one there is the CLI for the SSDev DM def data mover, which doesn't have tagging support and is the default data mover. Um, policy wise, we've got a policy domain called VMware and uh, we've just got two management classes, one of them called standard. And that actually points to, uh, at the back end, we've got a, a uh, cloud storage pool, or cloud container pool rather, uh, and we've got that using the uh, IBM cloud object storage up in uh, the IBM Bluemix cloud. And uh, for the non-standard uh, management class, that's pointing down to this, uh, it's just a normal directories container pool, which we just uh, defined on a bit of local storage there on the, on the TSM server VM, sorry, the Spectrum Protect server VM. So uh, let's go and show how you apply the tags. Okay, so if we go back to our VM list, um, what we want to do at the minute is there's six VMs here that are showing up um, just under the data center node. We don't want to back all of these VMs up. Um, we've got a virtual center node there, sorry, virtual center VM, a V proxy and the TSM server. We don't want to back any of those up. Now, what we would have done in the past is we'd have added them to the exclude list, I guess, on the uh, option file. Now we're just going to give them a tag. So if we go to tags and custom attributes, assign a tag, we've got a tag here that says excluded. Okay, as Dave's already said, these tags are uh, populated when the Spectrum Protect plugin is installed as part of the vSphere web client. Tags and custom attributes, assign tag. We're going to exclude all three of these VMs, assign. So V proxy. Excluded. Okay, so if we just take you through these six VMs now, so V proxy has a tag over here in the summary of excluded, as does V center, as does the TSM server, and then the three above it don't have any tags at all. Okay, so we're going to issue some backup commands to our two data mover nodes. Do you want to explain what's going to happen with this, Dave? Yep, uh, we're going to do some sort of command line backup. It's basically simulating what would happen if you ran a scheduled backup using these two data movers. So as you can see, we're going to back up everything on the host, but using schedule tag as our sort of scheduling mode, if you like, and we're going to do uh, incremental forever backups of these things. So let, let's see what happens when we uh, launch our backups. Okay. That's the uh, command on the default data mover and this is the command on the non-default data mover the other data mover now what we would expect to happen is because there are three vms that are resident in our data center without any tags at all we would assume that the default data mover will pick up all three of those and because there's no workload that's being pushed towards the other data mover we'd assume that it's not going to do anything so if you look on the left hand side now you can see it says the virtual machine um, that was specified on the backup VM command could not be found or was excluded from the operation. It's not found any VMs that it wants to back up using ssdevdm, which is what we'd expect. And over here on the right hand side, you can see that ssdevdmdef is backing up some VMs. If you go up here, it says total number of virtual machines to process three. Um, so it is backing up those three VMs as we expected. It's doing those in parallel because in the option file, we've got VM max parallel set to four. So it should be pretty quick to do these backups. So we'll just confirm these backups have completed. And then what we're going to do is we're going to move the t move those backups the way they get backed up by modifying the tags in Virtual Center. OK, so uh, rather than wait for that to finish, we can talk a bit. So um, previously, we've just showed you adding tags to uh, VM, VM virtual machines. Uh, you can also assign tags to any kind of object in your VMware, in your vSphere inventory. So from the 
data center at the top level. You can assign them to resource groups below that. You can assign them to whole clusters or individual hosts or even VM folders. So all of those sort of objects in the inventory, you can have tags assigned and those, those tags will be inherited from the level above, if you see what I mean. So if you, if you assign one, let's say at the data center level, then everything, all VMs in the, in the data center will have that tag. Unless they're overridden. Yeah. Yeah. So they're assigned, if they're assigned at a higher level, then you can override them at a lower level, but otherwise they will be inherited from the object above. Absolutely. So potentially complicated, but potentially very powerful when it comes to scheduling. I think that might be our last VM. Here he goes. Okay, so you can see there, total number of virtual machines backed up successfully, three. Uh, the three virtual machines that we expected, the ones without any tags, total number of virtual machines processed three. Okay, so that was exactly the behavior we expected. These three VMs here were all backed up by the default data mover because they haven't got any tags assigned to them. Okay, so what are we going to do, Dave? We're going to start moving these into some of these folders. Rather than assigning tags to the individual machines, we're going to assign them to the folders so that we can see the inherited behavior yeah that's right yeah and also to demonstrate that you can assign them to objects other than virtual machines okay so we've got a folder here called SS dev DM which is as more astute if you will have realized the name of our data mover we're going to assign some tags to this specific folder we're going to give it three tags so the first tag we're going to give it is include or included this object is included in scheduled backups The second one we're going to give is the management class standard. So anything here will have the standard management class. And then the third one we're going to give it is SSDev DM, which is the name of the data mover. Okay, so now anything that's sitting in this folder, unless it gets overridden at a lower level, will use the management class standard. It will be included for backups and it will go under SSDev DM. So I'm going to move this VM into this folder. Okay, um, and we've also got a folder in there called non-standard. That's right. So what I'm going to do with that one is I'm going to assign that a tag of non-standard. Now the reason I'm doing this is because we've got our management class of non-standard. Um, I'm going to assign specifically just that one tag to non-standard. There it is. So that means that anything that goes into that folder will inherit the tags from above. So it'll inherit the tags from SSDFDM unless they're overridden at a low level. So that means they will have the included tag and they will have the um, SSDFDM data mover tag. However, what they won't have will be the management class because we're changing the management class. So let's go into that non-standard folder. There we go. Okay, so you can now see we've got DevWin um, 2016, which is in SSDevDM, DevWin OS 10, which is in non-standard, and we're leaving DevWin ADFS 01 outside. So that one still has no tags. So what would we expect to happen now, Dave, if we issued those two backup commands again? Well, what I'd expect to happen is our default data mover should back up the one that was left with no tags. Uh, our Tag, tagging supported data movers should back up well the rest that ended up in those two folders most of them under the standard management class but uh, the one ending OS 10 we're hoping is going to go via the non-standard management class and end up in the directories container pool as opposed to the cloud container pool so let's see what happens Okay, so you can see here on the left-hand side, total number of machines to process, two. So DevWin OS 10, which we know about, DevWin 2016. So those are the two that we've scheduled to move, go with the DM, DM data mover. And then over here, DevWin ADFS 01, that's the one that we've left with no tags. So that's getting picked up by the default data mover. So, so far, all looks good. DevWin ADFS 01, as you'd expect, will probably complete first. 
exciting, isn't it? It's pretty exciting, Dave. It's as exciting as it gets. Yeah. Okay. Steve. Well, it's the backups are going, Dave. Oh. Uh, okay, you've seen something happen on the left hand side. So Devwin OS 10 um, has completed. Um, on this side, this one is still going. Um, over here, we've got Devwin 2016. It's looking pretty good to me. So there you go. So Devwin ADFS01, the only machine backed up under the default data mover. So that is as we expected. That's the only machine that's sitting there with no tags. Brilliant. And then over here, you've got two machines backed up. You've got Devwin OS10 and yeah. Devwin 2016. Now, we backed those up using different management classes, didn't we? Which one did we back up? So Devwin OS10 should be on temp, the temporary storage. So if we do yeah, QR. Yeah, that would be cool, please. I would yeah. hope. So here we're very disappointed if not. There you go. So you've got here um, VM full dev win OS 10 on temp DIR um, and dev win 2016 sitting there pretty on IBM Cloud. Okay, that's exactly what we wanted. I think it's been a pretty good demonstration of how you can use tags to, I guess, manage your workload and you know point your stuff in to the storage pools and to the management classes you want it to go to. Um, you can also use it if you've got multiple data movers. There is an option in the um, settings to balance the load across the data movers automatically. Obviously, we can't demonstrate that because we've only got one data mover. Um, I'm pretty sure that's about it. If we've got, if you've got any other questions, I guess, then you can uh, get in touch with Silverstring through the usual channels. So Silverstring's website is www.silverstring.com. The email address, if you want anyone to give you a shout, is info at silverstring.com. My name's Steve Miller. Dave, have you got anything to add? My name's Dave White. Um, yeah, if, if you want to leave comments on this on this video, please do. Tell us uh, if you'd like to see anything else or if you'd just like it to stop. So uh, thanks very much for watching uh, and Merry Christmas. <laughs>